Okay, folks. Right on schedule. Right, next time, I just soon be late. Well, I'm sorry if the ride was a little bit rough on you. Nah, I'm sure you are. Well, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. <laughs> Let's get them bags out here, sir. You got a package for me, Charlie? Oh, honey, no, I can't say as I do, Joe. We're supposed to be on at 2 o'clock. Where, from San Francisco? Yeah. Oh, well, that's it, then. I mean, we missed our connection to three for us. It'll be on at 6 o'clock, though. You sure it's going to be on at 6 o'clock? Oh, yeah, got to be. Because if it ain't, won't be here till tomorrow. I think of that old Charlie. You can always depend on him to give you a straight answer. Yeah, pardon me. Would you tell me where the Virginia City Hotel is? Oh, yeah. It's right up the end of the street. You can't miss it. Thank you. Okay. Well, we got four hot hours to kill. Come on. I'll buy you beer. Sounds good to me. Feel better? Yes, the bath was fine. You're all dressed. Are you going out? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, look around town for a bit. Is there something wrong with that? I've been cooped up in that stage for a week. I just want to get out for a while. <laughs> I just asked if you were going out. Well, I am. Why are you taking the money with you? Look, we've been through all this before. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm just going to take it down to the bank. It'd be a lot safer there than letting it hang around here, don't you think? All right, then. Stop worrying. We came out here to get a fresh start. Everything's in the past. I've changed. <laughs> You've got to change, too. You've got to trust me. back soon. And if you're a good girl, I'll bring you back a surprise.
three nines for the dealer. Gentlemen, the price of poker just went up to five hundred dollars. You rich for me. I'm still in. Last card. Three nines, about a thousand. I see. Raise you fourteen hundred. Could it just be that you have a third jack facing the table. There's only one way to find out. You're right. But it uh, doesn't really matter. But you see, I have the fourth nine. Your deal, Mr. Harper. Um, that's all the money I have with me. I'll have to make out a marker for no markers, Mr. Harper. We play for cash. You have to give me a chance to break even. Harper, I don't have to give you anything. Deal passes to you, old timer. No. All right, leave him alone. Stay out of this. Look, you stuck it on him once. That's enough. Sorry, I didn't see you lying there. Hey, you all right? Come on, man. Show me your hotel. Take it easy on me. Come on, boys, it's all over. Put your money down. Gloria you thinks your luck's gonna change. I just said this was his room. Bring him in. You can put him in there. Just take it easy. Yeah, there was a fight. He didn't get hurt real bad. He just needs to sleep it off. I know. He drinks more than he fights. I see you managed to get all of his money. What? I should thank you. You're the first one who ever bothered to bring him home. Or did you think there might be a little something left? If you thought that you're wrong, there's nothing left. There never is. Look, lady, I didn't come here to find out about any money, and I didn't take the money he had with him. He got in a card game he shouldn't have. I just brought him home, that's all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. But thank you for bringing him home. No need, eh? Guess we both lost our tempers. I didn't have any right to bite your head off either. Friends? Friends? Uh, Doc Martin's a good man if your husband's hurting when he wakes up. He's my brother. Oh. Doc's the best in town. I'll remember that. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. Alice Harper. I guess I better be going. Bye. Goodbye. All right, fellas, let's clean it up. Hey, right, you're really moving along, huh? You said you went in the logging road dead in a hurry. That's the way we're doing it. Where's Joe? Uh, right down to the trees, planting some more dynamite. Ah. Well, I'll look in on him. I'll be back to give you a hand. All right, we'll be here. How's it going, Joe? Yeah, we're going pretty good so far. Get all the easy stuff out of the way. A lot of heavy stuff to clear the rest of the way down. Uh, we're gonna need some more dynamite pretty soon. Uh, uh, this letter came for you. Oh, thanks. I'll send Will to town for it. You know, you ought to have to go deeper with that charges. I'll be darned. That's about 18 inches deeper, and I'd probably have to double the charge, too. No reason to go and do that. Oh, well, yes, there is. He's going to move this stump out of here. Joe? Joseph? Hmm? I was saying you're going to have a problem moving this stump out of here. No, no, I won't have any problem. I'll 
Just leave it on about 18 inches and double the charges. That would have been an idea. I'll have Will bring the dynamite out of here as quick as we can make it. Uh, no, I'll, I'll do it. I'll get it. I want to make sure it's right. Oh. You suit yourself. See you at supper. See you at supper. May I help you? Hmm? I said, may I help you? Uh, yeah, thank you. I, uh, I'd like to buy just a little present for a friend. A very close friend, I take it. Oh, no, no. So what, what I want is something more like a, a hat. I'd like to buy a hat. I see. Uh, Miss Harper will help you. She's in charge of the hat department. Thank you. Uh, the hat department is over here. Oh. We'll be right with you. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Pleasure to see you. It's nice to see you. I want to thank you for your thank you, no? Oh, well, it was the least I could do. My brother told me everything that happened. Well, I understand that you want to buy a hat. We just have a new shipment up from St. Louis. I love this one. I think it's really lovely. What do you think? Yeah, what's nice, I, well, I, I don't know too much about hats. I know what you mean. It's not the easiest thing to pick out for a woman without her trying it on, I mean. Well, perhaps you'd like to consider something else for Mrs. Cartwright. A shawl there there is no Mrs. Cartwright. Oh, well. I, say, I really didn't want to buy anything. I. Uh... I just came in to thank you for the thank you note and ask you if you'd have dinner with me tonight. I'd like that. How's eight o'clock? Eight's fine. I'll see you at eight. See you at eight. Funny little sister, I thought I was late. <laughs> I lost the key. <laughs> you look very nice. You, you always look very nice. John, you told me you were going to look for a job. Well, I lied. But I always do, don't I? You always look very nice, and I always lie. And I always forgive you. I can't, John. I can't take care of you anymore. I'm sorry. I had a few drinks, but I'll get a job tomorrow. I promise. I don't care what you do tomorrow. I want you out of here tonight. I'm not going to be like Mother John. I'm not going to spend my life making excuses for you. And die listening to your promises. <laughs> I'm moving into a single room in the morning. I expect you to be gone by then. Hi. You ready? Goodbye, John. I guess I wasn't hungry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I... 
I shouldn't have come over to the store. I, I kind of put you on the spot when I asked you to go out with me. I... Oh, no. N no, I'm... I'm glad you did. I wanted... It has nothing to do with you. You sure? I'm sure. Well, if it has nothing to do with me and you really wanted to go out with me, then why are you messing up my evening? I mean, really. You know, it took an awful lot of nerve for me to go in that store with all those women and ask you to go out with me. They're all looking at me. What's so funny? I don't know. You just made me laugh. Well, I'd rather not know why you're laughing than I know why you're crying. All right, then we go. Where do we go? Well, there's only one place that a man takes a woman on a night like this. Where's that? my heart when Annie was a kid and he ate bugs. All kinds of bugs. Certainly didn't hurt his fiddle playing, any. Well, it never hurt anything Annie ever did. I remember when we were kids, we used to sit around and watch him eat these bugs, you know, and bees. He couldn't get enough of bees. Now, really, we, we'd sit around and watch him eat these bugs and figure he was going to die, you know. When he got a little bit older, he could run faster and jump farther than anybody else in Virginia City. They would all sit around and figure we should have eaten bugs when we were little. I don't know. I really don't know when to believe you. They can always believe me. I may not always be telling the truth, but you can always believe me. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Yeah, same here. Look, I'll um, walk you up to your room if you want. No, thank you. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you again. I really had a good time. It was, it was my pleasure. Good night. Uh, uh, can I see you again? Yes. Is tomorrow too soon? No. What time to get off work? I'm off tomorrow. It's Sunday. Oh, I forgot. All right, well, let me uh, let me pick you up early. Say two o'clock. Fine. I'll see you too then.
Did you have a good time? Now, don't worry. I'm all packed. I'm going to Carson City. I just want to say goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I told you, John, it's not going to work this time. That's not why I'm saying this. I know that I've made a mess of my life so far. I've hurt a lot of people. And you're right to send me away. It is for my own good. And if I ever want to make it, it'll have to be on my own. Be happy. You're really happy you took me for a ride today. Done nothing but tell you my troubles. <laughs> don't be silly. You didn't hear me complain, did you? Well, I don't think I've been quiet long enough to give you a chance. I'm a good listener. Right. Anyway, no more. Joe Cartwright, I promise I will not spoil your day. Alice Harper, the only thing that could spoil my day would be not having you with me. Beautiful. That's my favorite place. Brother Haas and I used to come here when we were kids. We didn't do anything special. We just sit and look at it. We used to call it our happy place. You really loved him, didn't you? I think everybody did. He was that kind of guy. Do you know I spent my whole life in the city dreaming of a place like this? Somewhere quiet. Clean. I'm glad you didn't stay in the city. Some, uh, some stew in the kitchen. No, oh, thanks. We had dinner in town. Dinner? Uh, dinner? Two nights in a row? Sounds like he's getting serious. Uh-huh. Well, I better be serious. 
I'm gonna ask that girl to marry me. See you in the morning. time if you don't mind but if you get it finished too soon you ain't gonna have anything to do but sit around and get panicky yeah, for your information i'm not even nervous oh yeah then how come you're nailing your fingers to the roof <laughs> yeah, well, you keep your mind on your work and never mind the jokes little brother <laughs> hey it looks like you got company you keep working Hey, Joe, don't take too long now. I want to make sure this place gets ready on time. You just keep working like I told you. They're going to be all right, those two. Yes, sir, they're going to be all right. Jack, I buy another one. You're getting down kind of early, ain't you, Mr. Harper? Celebrate, Jack. Celebrate. My sister's getting married today over in Virginia City. How come you didn't make the wedding? <laughs> I guess I just wasn't up to it. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. Besides, why spoil her day? You know what I told her I was... Uh, doing? I wrote her that I was working on a big land deal. And I couldn't get away. Dear little sister, I told you I'd make it on my own, and I have. I'm at work on a big land deal, and I'm sorry, but I just can't make the wedding. Congratulations.
Sergeant. Hey, Jamie, give me a hand with this tie, will you? For some reason, I just can't get this darn thing tied. I thought you said you weren't nervous. Well, I lied. Just see if you can get it tied. All right. Fire ready in? Only since sunrise. Hey, what, what time is it? Well, Joseph, it's a, it's time. It's time. All right, let's go. gathered here today to bring these two people together in holy matrimony. A whole new life will begin for the two of you today. A life of sharing not just the joys, but the sorrows too. It won't always be easy. Life never is. You have to work at it and work hard. But you will find that there is great strength in love. Do you, Alice Harper, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish, till death do you part? I do. And do you, Joe Cartwright, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish, till death do you part? I do. this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder.
forever. late. I've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. So have I. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Now, let's go. How true. How very true. It is my problem. And I must work it out on my own. Hey. You know it's getting late. No, I'm almost done. You passed separate six. You've been late the last three times. Well, whose fault is that? Never you mind, you just get a move on, okay? Hey, well, I'm already. I thought you were worried about being late. I've been waiting for you to button me up. husband you are. You've only seen me in it ten times. Well, it's so darn tight, I can hardly hook it up. Really? Mm-hmm. This material shrinks sometimes. There, pretty good. Well, I must say tight or not, you look very lovely. Yeah. Go hook up the buggy. Yeah. Yes, get the buggy ready, Joe. Mr. Harper, we've been waiting for you. Mr. Damien wants his money. I'll have it in a few days. I told you. Mr. Damien's getting impatient. Now we're asking nice this time. 48 hours from now, we won't be asking so nice. You understand? 48 hours, Mr. Harper. 
I understand. Unless I have to. I swear you worked harder the last few months you've been married than all the years you worked at Ponderosa. That's because I don't have candy there holding me back all the time. I'll remember that next time you need some help with something. <laughs> we passed Alice on the road away back. Why don't you come home for lunch? I should pack my lunch. And you said it was important. Oh, she's fixing you something special. You're a married man now. You got to do what your wife tells you. Yeah. Now, for your information, I was going to quit after I finished taking this hole anyway. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Go on, Jim. Take care, Bob.
night. He didn't get burned real bad. He just needs to... Sleep it off, I know. He drinks more than he fights. I see you managed to get all of his money. Look, lady, I didn't come here to find out about any money, and I didn't take the money he had with him. He got in a card game he shouldn't have. I just brought him home, that's all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing him home. Friends? Friends. My favorite place. Brother Hoss and I used to come here when we were kids. We didn't do anything special. We just sit and look at it. We used to call it our happy place. You really loved him, didn't you? Nice night for a walk, isn't it, John? Isn't it, John? You disappoint me, John. You really do. I trusted you. You owe me money, a great deal of money. You promised to pay me, and you haven't. Da Damien, I will pay you. I just need a few more days. I told you. I know what you told me. You told me you had a bank craft coming in from... St. Louis. Yes, yes, I do. And it'll be here in just a few days. There is no bank draft, is there, John? Yes, there. I swear there is. Lying is a sin, John. A man must pay for his sins. Hadley? No, 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 please, please. I, I, please. All right. Oh, I lied. I'm sorry. I was scared. I, I thought that my luck would change, that I could win some of the money back. I let you play on credit, and you've never really meant to pay me. That's not true. I will pay you. I'll get the money somewhere. Where? I don't know. That's not good enough. Anyway. No, wait, wait. My sister, she's got the money. She got married three, four months ago to a fellow that's got plenty. She'll give it to me. Five thousand is a lot of money. Her husband's got it. His father owns a big spread. His name's Cartwright. Believe me, he's got plenty of money.
I suppose you wonder what I'm doing. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. I was, see, I was putting the cradle in different places around the room to see where the baby would get a lot of sun and have a nice view at the same time. Uh, well, um, why don't you put it right in the center? See, then the baby can look straight up. Because if you keep fooling around with the cradle, this room is never going to get a roof on it. Is, is it big enough? The room? The room, yeah, it's big enough. Plenty big. I can make it a lot bigger. Yeah. I think it's perfect. I suppose you have twin. Would you not say that? <laughs> I'm going to have plenty of trouble just taking care of one at a time. Thank you. Very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Very much. I think two years and these wouldn't be too bad, though, would it? We're going to have as many use and as you want. Okay? Right now, I think we ought to get the first room finished. Finished. All right. I'm going to go over to the closet and get some more lumber. Say hello for me. Will do. See if the family wants to have supper with us. We've got plenty. I will. I love you. Get some good supper. No point in rushing it. You gotta let Hobson get that pie finished. You know how he's gonna feel if we go off and leave it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Say, hey, uh, what's it uh, feel like knowing you're gonna be a papa? I tell you, he gets nervous, can't sleep at night. Well, let me be He's never gonna let you sleep. <laughs> I don't think you understand how serious this situation really is. I understand exactly how serious it is for you. I hardly think you're in any position to threaten me. Not if you care about your brother. He really has some very fine qualities, you know. I would advise you to leave my brother right here and take your friends and go. My husband and his family will be here any minute, and I don't think they'll take too kindly to your being here. What a shame. I had hoped we could be such good friends. Look what I found. Stones look quite good. I don't know if it covers the full amount owed to me. But it's better than nothing. Give me back the box. Get out of my house. Give me back the box. Get out of my house! I'll only ask you one more time. And then I'll have to let Mr. Hadley take it from you. Don't touch it!
can't tell how it started, Clem. Could have been the stove. More than likely was. Yeah. I never did see a fire burn any hotter than this one. Sheriff, take a look over here. What's left of one? I wonder who it is. Well, there's no way to tell. You better wrap it up and put it in the wagon with, with the woman, then head back to town. We know, O oh God, that you will welcome Alice Cartwright to your kingdom with open arms. And we pray that. With that knowledge, her husband and her loved ones will find comfort. Help them, O oh Lord, to forget this tragedy and to remember only the beauty and the love that was Alice Cartwright. Amen. Welcome to our house. It's getting kind of late. I was just wondering where you were. Pa, always worrying. No, I, I wasn't worried. Oh, come on now, come on. You were worrying. Well, there's nothing to worry about you. Heard the preacher today. is in heaven and you think about the good times. and mine and our babies. I, ne I never got the baby's room finished, you know. I thought it was too sm small, but I told Alice I could make it bigger. Plenty big.
Looks like you're all set. hear from you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'm where I'm just gonna keep moving. Just need a little time. And now. Take care. Yeah, well. Have a beer with you. Settle for whiskey? Beer went skunky on me. Yeah, whiskey'd be fine. <sighs> Looks like you've been on the trail for a while. Yeah, about a month. Well, I don't know stable said he had rooms to rent. Well, sure do. Ain't the greatest, but the beds are sleepable. That's fine. Let's see. Six. End of the hall. That's 25 cents for the room and 50 cents for the whiskey. Keep the change. Good night. Sleep good.
Where did you get that music box? Listen, mister, you get out of here. Where did you get it? Where did you get it? It's mine. You get out of here. Now you hold on. Get out of here. He was a little fella. He... He talked real proper, real fancy. What was his name? Damien. Damien, that was it. His last name? I, I don't know. His friends just called him Damien. His friends? What were their names? I... I, I don't know. Pink! Three fellas he had with him, I don't know. One of them was big and mean looking. Never said anything. This this Damien did all the talking. How long ago did they leave? A couple of weeks. They stayed in town for a while gambling. Cleaned everybody out. Mentioned something about working their way to Frisco. I don't know anymore. I swear it. are saddled. Joe, l let me go with you. No, I want you to ride into town. Tell Clem what happened. Have more of the law in San Francisco. They can notify the jewelry stores to keep an eye out for the necklace. It'll be our only lead if they beat us to Frisco. All right. Kenny and I will check every little town on the way. Let's go. Better wire your pawn Carson City, too. All right. Should I tell them to try to catch up with you? No, not enough time. Just tell them, tell them we'll get them.
What's the next town? Uh, Haskell. How far? Well, we, um, we ought to make it by nightfall. Yes, Daddy. Say We're going to have to rest the horses a while on the way. After that, we've got just a few more towns for Frisco. Barlow, Thornton. It means we're going to have to add that room out a little sooner than we planned to. We better get going. Excellent. A pleasant surprise in such plebeian surroundings. I want to get out of this place. It's driving me nuts. There's nothing to do around here. I say when we can go. Well, I wish you'd hurry up and decide. I don't hurry anything! That's what I like about Mr. Hanley here. Yeah? He doesn't hurry either. He enjoys every moment. Savors it. Like you would have fine wine. You've angered me, Slow. I think you ought to be more like Mr. Hanley. Hanley. Cut out his tongue. Come on, you gotta be joking. I thought you knew me far better than that. Now, wait a minute, I... I didn't mean nothing by that, I'm sorry. Hey, look, I said I was sorry. Look, call him off, will you? Don't call him! Please! You ought to be forgiven! Yeah. You kneel when you ask for forgiveness. Come forward. Yes, Sloan. Please, forgive me. Was forgiven.
about an hour. Horses ought to be rested by now. I'll get them saddled up. One dollar a night for two. Extra 50 cents if you want a bath. We don't need a room. We're looking for some men. There's four of them. One's named Damien. Mr. Damien, you friends of his? And he's here? Was here. Wonderful man, real gentleman. How long ago did they leave? Four, maybe five hours ago. Left me a five dollar tip. It's gonna be tough tracking at night. We'll need torches. We'll need some fresh horses too. Where's the livery? Why are you looking for him? Where's the livery? All the way up the north end of the street. He wouldn't do nothing wrong. I told you, he's a gentleman. Who they could be. Well, that doesn't matter. How far behind us would you say they are? Two, maybe three hours at the pace they're going. It'll be daylight in three hours. Mr. Hanley and I will go on ahead until we find some fresh water. You two stay behind. And kill them. seen him before. There's one thing for sure. I'm never gonna see him again. Any 
like your friend over there, you're going to talk. Oh, I, I don't want no part of this. Look, I, I didn't mean you any harm. I don't even know you! You know my wife. Danger! Your wife? What else? My wife. You burned my house. No, that wasn't me. That was Damien and Hanley. They done it. Look, I, I was there, but I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Damien, he let Hanley kill her. And then they burned her house. That's the truth. Where are they? They rode on ahead to look for water. We're supposed to meet them there. Stay with him. Hanley! I don't like it. I thought they would have been here by now. If anything's gone wrong, those two will still be following us. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that at all. Build a fire. We'll be ready if company come. where I can see him. Whatever you're saying. That means you too. I'm afraid that won't do any good. There's no one under that blanket. Mr. Hanley! Did he ride in alone? I could have had Mr. Hanley kill you right away. But I'd like to know why I'm being followed. It makes me very uneasy not knowing why. You killed my wife. Why? Oh, yes. It must be Carfact. Of course. But how did you connect us? We burned all the evidence. Not the music box. Music box. That's right. Now, that was stupid of me, I must admit. But no one's perfect. You see, women happen to be my only vice. Now, you take Mr. Hanley here. He doesn't have that problem. He has a much different way of dealing with women. I'm afraid your wife was an example. Mr. Hanley, give me the rifle. Well, you and Mr. Cartwright have something to settle. You did kill his wife. And since we have no judge or jury here, I think the fairest way is through trial by combat. Let the trial begin, Mr. Hadley.
You disappoint me, Cold Heart. The Bible says an eye for an eye. You should have killed him. You had the right. I'll give you one more chance. So be it. I love you.
John? Came just as soon as I got the wire. Saying you'd be released today, so I'm late. I'm just wondering why you bothered. Well, Mike came to see me last year. Maybe he promised I'd bring you home in one piece. You think he can do that, Ben? I think you'd be ready to go home. Ben. I owed you that. You promised me a fair trial. I didn't get it. Now I owe you one. You ready to go now? I'm ready to start then. This is Mr. Dundee. Hello, sir. How are you, Jamie? John, let me put your horse up. Expecting a dry season, man? I can never tell. We'll be ready for it if it comes. <laughs> I mean, so I can lay in those rocks just as fast as they can. Oh, man. listen to him. You are, huh? All right, son, let's see how fast you are. Come on. I saw it. Well, just stand there. Get back to work. <laughs> Where's the new man? With Jamie after some trout for our breakfast. Sure has taken a shine to him, hasn't he? How long does he stand? I thought I'd give him a few days. Get a little confidence back. But I don't think he's suffering from the lack of that. Still got to deliver him? I made a promise. I think one of us ought to go with him. As long as we get home and decide to get even with the folks, you're going to be right in the middle. He hasn't said anything to indicate he's looking for trouble. It's a point he hadn't said anything. I think he's already decided what he's going to do, and I don't think it's friendly. Is that why you're riding such tight hurt on me? I'll tell you what, Ben. Why don't you just advance me enough money to get my wife a nice little coming home present? And I'll be on my way. Why should I do that? Well, that would save you a nice long trip, wouldn't it? I promised your wife I was going to deliver you, and I'm going to keep that promise. What about the loan? No loan. But if I give you a chance to earn what you need. People who call me a hardhead just don't know him, do they?
rug slipped right onto my hands, Joe. Yeah, onto my foot. Mm -hmm. You think it's busted? No, just bruised a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, old buddy. <laughs> don't worry, but it's not your fault. It's Dundee's. We're lucky we don't have broken backs. You still at it? Going like a steam engine. Somebody tell him it's not a race. We're not trying to prove anything. I don't know. Maybe he is. You got $18 coming to you. That's about twice a regular week's pay, isn't it? Don't do me any favors, Ben. A man does the work of two men, he gets double wages. All right, that kind of talk makes sense. You're tagging along the rest of the way. That doesn't make sense, though. Nobody asked you. I suppose it wouldn't do any good to ask you for the loan of a gun, either way. That's right, wouldn't do any good. You take care, huh? Yes, sir, Mr. Dundee. Yeah. Hope I see you again one of these days. One of these days. Let's finish up as soon as you can. Huh? We'll see you next week. You're not back by then. We're going to come looking for you. Take care, Pa. That's what it's like being on the outside. What did happen that night? <sighs> Just exactly what I said at the trial. And I'd never seen before picked a fight with me. And you killed him. Well, worst anybody can say was it was a fair fight. Well, <sighs> the judge didn't think so. Neither the sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff was a friend of him. Whose friend are you, Ben? I've known Meg since she was knee high to a grasshopper. And Father and I were friends years before that. Uh, I guess that answers my question. Send someone to get him back home, making sure that his wild temper doesn't get him into trouble again. Figure that woman has uh, done her bit, too. Now it's my time. Isn't it? We only had three months together. Did you know that, Ben? Yeah, I knew that. I wonder how she's going to take to me now. She's changed. Hey, you know, we got a long, hard ride ahead of us. It'd be a real favor if you just shut up and let us both get a little shut eye. the town. We don't have to ride through it. Oh, no, I got some business here. Watch it. What kind of business? I got to buy a present for my wife, remember?
You see many friendly faces, Ben? Mr. Dundee, sure. Here. Here's some very nice things. Yes, sir, they are. These combs now, they're imported. Mm -hmm. uh, what about that shawl over there, Mr. Sangster? Well, uh, why... Uh, oh, that's a real beauty. Yeah. Art Fancher's wife's been wanting that for a long time. Well, and Art Fancher's wife wants it. Huh? How much is it? Well, seeing as it's imported, and uh, I guess maybe uh, four dollars. All right, I'll take it. Mr. Sanction. One of those. And one of those. business with you again. Thank you. No, that's it? No, one more stop. You got your present? <laughs> no, but I want a bath, Ben, with plenty of hot water and soap. Going home in style. Right through us. Well, what'd you expect him to do? Get off his horse and kiss you?
down here. you for another day or two. I mean, there was no way of knowing just when you'd get here. Meg, uh, thank you. <laughs> what am I doing? You always have beautiful hands, Meg. I've tried to keep busy. I... I guess working around the place doesn't keep my hands ladylike. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah. Fixing plows and rebuilding barns kind of makes for calluses and blisters, then. I tried to keep busy. I think I'll just have another look around the place. Then you've been with him for a while now. Has he changed? Well, he's still... He's still angry inside, if that's what you mean, now, Meg. Meg, when you came and asked me to bring him here, why didn't you tell me you were doing all the work? Before John went away, he made certain arrangements, and they just never worked out, that's all. What kind of arrangements? With his business partners in town. Uh, Bartlett and Pancha, fellows that were at the trial. They said that they'd look after the ranch and try to keep things up until he got back. And... This is all he needs. Meg, why didn't you come to me? No. Oh, Meg. Meg, you know what? You, you two need time alone together to get reacquainted. Then you're not leaving. Of course I am. I brought him here, just as you asked me to. Oh, please, Ben, don't go. Meg, what's the matter? I don't want to be alone with him. He's your husband. And I'm afraid of him. <sighs> Welcome home, John Dundee. What do you mean? for a few days, if you want me to. Let me go. Go out and see if I can get my hand. See your hands, Ben. Yeah, I saw them. You know, 
folks around here weren't too happy when Meg chose me for a husband because they figured that my bad temper had always got me into trouble and always would get me into trouble. I figured she was just buying her share. Yeah, you went out and proved them right. Look, Ben, you've been our friend for a long time. I figure that gives you a right to say that. But I cut this farm right out of the raw dirt, and I did it for her. Yeah, I know. Meg told me about your friends and the promise they made. We'll see she suffers no want. That's what they said. What kind of business were you in? Oh, we pooled our money. We bought our horses. Then when the price was up, we sold them to the Army. You have papers and all that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah, we had partnership agreements and contracts when we sold the stock. Ben, her hands were as white as snow when I married her. There wasn't a mark on them. Not when I left here. We'll see, she suffers no want. That's what they said. That's what they said. You know. This isn't your affair anymore. You've done your good deed. Now we're quits. Not quite. Meg asked me to stay. What for? She wants me to. I'm telling you to stay out of it. I know how you're feeling. Maybe I feel a bit that way myself. That gun's brand new. You've had revenge in mind long before you ever saw Meg's hands. I owe you one, remember? I saw that storekeeper walking on eggs. I thought it was respect. He was just plain scared. I'll have the gun. You're on parole. You walk off this range with a gun. Those fellows in town will shoot you full of holes or put you in prison and throw away the key. What I got in mind just might be worth it. Now, give me the gun. What about Meg? Yes, John, what about me? Do I have anything to say about what's left of my life, or do you claim that privilege, too? What's your present? Where'd you get it, chum? Uh, we were in town. I just bought it. That was thoughtful of you. I want you to have something. Thank you. Can I open? into my life and into my bedroom after five years. You hand me a present and that's all there is to it. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? I'm talking about five years of waiting and working and, and doing without things. Five years of sleeping alone and crying in the night. Well, what do you think I was doing, Meg? for something you did, John. Meg, you're my wife. You married me. That makes you my wife. All right, I am your wife. and I waited for you and I, I worked for you all these years. And now you're going to have to do the same thing. You're, you're going to have to prove that, that you're able to be a good husband. Hold on, are you telling me I haven't got any rights in my own bedroom? Why not till you earn them? Just how am I supposed to do that? By, by courting me all over the place. By, by just like you did before we were married. Well, where am I supposed to sleep in the meantime? Anywhere but in here. Hmm. 
If you want anything, ma'am, I'll be out in the barn with the rest of the animals. like that there's something eating him inside i've seen it before meg do you really think i should stay on i mean it should be between just the two of you if you leave ben so do i all right as soon as i telegraph the boys i'll be staying on for a couple of more days i'll be back friends in this town? You ever try to cozy up to a grizzly bear, Mr. Cartwright? You, uh, you rode in with John Dundee. Yeah. You know him pretty well, do you? About five years. I was at the trial. Well, then you know he's got a temper like a scalded bobcat. He proved that in that uh, fist fight. Yeah, fight which you didn't start. Well, the uh, the jury thought otherwise, but that's all gone and forgotten. Yeah. I was hoping that he'd come back a changed man, but it uh, doesn't look like it. He wasn't in town an hour before he uh, bought himself a gun. No law against him having a gun? Well, I thank you for explaining a lot to me. But something maybe you don't know is the conditions of his parole forbid him from wearing or carrying a gun any place except on his own property. Oh, I think he was told all that. Well, I want you to tell him something for me. If he gets in any trouble at all, he's going to go back to prison, and that is a fact. I'll tell him that. Excuse me. Uh, by the way, Sheriff, uh, is there any law which forbids an ex-convict from defending himself? No. But it better be ironclad that it was self-defense, you understand me? Oh, yes, you've made it perfectly clear. Well, I want to make something else perfectly clear. I'm the law around here, and I'll decide what's self-defense and what isn't. Well, that's very clear as far as the first decision is concerned. Of course, sir, Sheriff, you know that you can be overruled by higher authority, such as the uh, U.S. Marshal, the Attorney General, or the Governor. You might think about that. So they're just waiting for him to make one wrong move. Uh -huh. Ben, what are we going to do? Yeah. Meg. Did, did John have any uh, problems with his, uh, with his partners before the trouble? First, it was all right. 
until he got suspicious of them. Started accusing them of juggling the accounts, of taking more than their share of the but profits. How long before the fight was this? Has uh, John ever been known to avoid a fight ever in his life? You know the answer to that, Ben. What are you getting at? Well, suppose, uh, suppose his suspicions were, uh, were right. I mean, suppose he had enough information about those partners of his to make a lot of trouble for them, put them behind bars. Now, if you were them, what would you do with a man who had a quick temper? You mean he was set up? Well, according to John's own testimony, a man whom he'd never known, never seen in his life before, picked a fight with him. Why? To kill him? Fancher wouldn't care who got killed. It worked out fine for them either way, didn't it? I mean, I guess... That nice, fine office in town. Now they own military contracts. Everybody's making money. John, let's move away somewhere. Start over again somewhere else, please. Man and wife? Yes. Man and wife. That's a very tempting offer, Maggie, if I was the kind of man who bought his wife's favors. I didn't mean it like that. John, what are you going to do? I don't know, Ben. I don't know. I think maybe first I just better figure out what kind of a man this woman wants for her husband. John? He said he had some work to do over at the well. Oh, he's not there, and his horse is gone, too. Uh, well. All right. Don't worry, I'll find him. It's Dundee. He's not wearing a gun. I'll handle them. Get some of the boys and stand by. Right. Hello, Art. Nice fancy layout you got here. We were wondering when you're going to get around to dropping by. Seems like you prospered some, huh? We worked hard. Says my wife. You remember my wife, don't you, Art? Meg? Sure. Well, I'm your partner, Art. You forgot to send her my share of the profits. Profits? There weren't any for a while. Things were tight right after you went away. That partnership was a limited agreement. It had to be renewed every 90 days. You weren't here. You didn't sign, so you weren't a partner anymore. I got all the papers in the file. I can show you. Sure, sure. All legal and proper, huh? You can bet it's legal. Get a lawyer and we'll prove it. No, no, there wouldn't be any need for that. Look, Art, I, I did some figuring and I figured it all out. I figured about a thousand dollars for each year would be fair. Not for me, for her. Not a dime. Not ever. Five thousand dollars tomorrow. Or you and Bartlett are going to be looking over your shoulders every day and every night because I'm coming to collect. Maybe you'd better look out in the street. Hard right, to take a dozen like him, and even that wouldn't keep me away from you. Now, I think it'd be better all the way around if you just sort of paid it out. You're not getting a penny out of this.
$5,000 tomorrow, Art. Tell your partner. Mister. Everybody having a good time? Join yourselves. I never raised a hand in anger, Ben. Well, Sheriff. He'll be back. He promised me that. Not if we move first, he won't. What do you want? My husband is... In the barn. Been there for an hour. Cartwright rode out early. Bedroll and canteen in his saddle. Going home. figured as soon as you rode out. What is he? His horse is still tied to the hitch rail. Well, he won't be needing it. John, where is he? He's right there. I don't make the same mistake twice, Ben. his friends get it. Jim Anders. Anders? How did you know he was out here, Sheriff? That don't matter. We got his body and his horse, and we got you before you could get rid of him. Uh -huh. Now put your hands up. You afraid of an unarmed man, Sheriff? Maybe you better take a look first. Is the murdered man you're looking for? You sent him out here to be killed, didn't you, Sheriff? Then came out here to arrest Dundee for his murder. What are you talking about? Well, the judge and the governor call it complicity in attempted murder. They'll also want to look into the fight that sent Dundee to prison after they hear what Anders had to say about it. You don't know what you're talking about.
I want you to get a new out of here. No. No, this is where I belong. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Go keep your eye on that house. I think them fellas are really trying to kill us out there. I get the stink feeling that you're right. Well, that makes it come down to self-defense, Ben. I think we ought to smoke them up, don't you? I was just waiting for you to say that. I'll, uh, I'll cover you. Right. John! Let him get away. When you get out of this, you're going to be sorry you said that. Another one down here. Where? Over by the corral, but I don't see him. to town and see the U.S. Marshal. Higher authority, Sheriff, in case you've forgotten. Move. 